As we look back across the 30 years, something happened in America in the 60s. Something seemed to have happened in the world in the 60s. Somewhere in the 60s, we hit the wall and knocked ourselves senseless. Everything became blurred and the mind tumbled. Psychology came up with situation ethics. Philosophy came up with the God is dead movement. Theology came up with new orthodoxy. And the arts came up with the theater of the absurd. And outside schools like Berkeley and all, intellectuals were smoking pot. The banality had come about. Everything had become trivialized. Bodily functions were mocked and minimalized. Nothing was private anymore. Sexuality was open. And somehow they say it was the Vietnam War. Something went wrong. We were fighting a war we ought not to have been fighting. And the mind unalterably changed never to recover. And those who were the rebels 33 years ago are now the professors and educators and men and women in power 30 years later. So says Dinesh D'Souza in his book Illiberal Education. So says Robert Bork in his book The Tempting of America. So says Alan Bloom in his book The Closing of the American Mind. None of those men collaborated on their writings. The 30 years ago the rebels have now taken hold and that's where all of this lawlessness is coming in. But you see what what happened was this there was a jettisoning of reason there was an inability to think in terms of the transcendent which brings coherence and consolation God provides a love that assuages all that brings satisfaction and as the nation began to forget God in the 60s and the death of God movement coming right out of Emory University in Atlanta and then sweeping across the nation as it were, suddenly we had become the God of God and we blamed all of the catastrophes and the Vietnam decision upon us. But we were now in an electronic generation. So images took control, no longer propositions, images took control because the mind was finding havoc within itself as the brain was being tinkered with by the newscasts which were propaganda movies which were propaganda and we haven't recovered in 30 years let me take you back though some time ago take you back a hundred years when a war was also going on and the nation's conscience was also being torn but something marvelous was still coming out in spite of all of the tragedy I want to read to you the words of Major Sullivan Ballou of the Second Rhode Island Volunteers, a letter he wrote to Sarah, his wife, one week prior to the Battle of Bull Run. I dare you to go and ask an average soldier to write like this today. Granted, he uses poetic imagination and romantic license, but still, notice the key point. Washington, D.C., July 14th. Dear Sarah, the indications are very strong that we shall move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. And lest I should not be able to write to you again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I am no more. Sarah, I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause for which I am engaged. And my courage does not halt or falter. I know how American civilization now leans upon the triumph of the government and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and suffering of the revolution. And I'm willing, Sarah, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in this life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. But Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence can break. And yet my love for country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly with all those chains to the battlefield. The memory of all those blissful moments I have enjoyed with you come crowding over me. And I feel most deeply grateful to God and you that I have enjoyed them for so long. And how hard it is for me, Sarah, to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of future years when, God willing, we might still have lived and loved together and see our boys grow up to honorable manhood around us. If I do not return, my dear Sarah, never forget how much I loved you, nor that when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. Forgive me my many faults and the many pains I have caused you. How thoughtless, how foolish I have sometimes been. But, oh, Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flit unseen around those they love, I shall always be with you in the brightest day and in the darkest night. Always, always. And when the soft breeze fans your cheek, it shall be my breath. Or the cool air, your throbbing temple, it shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Think I'm gone and wait for me, for we shall meet again. He died one week later in the Battle of Bulma. Think of the beauty of that letter. 
all the loves converging in a young heart, but only the power of omnipotence could give him the dictates of what he was willing to give up.